What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Top 5 Rundown. Well today's episode is an episode that if I said I have been hounded to do this episode it would be a gigantic understatement. My dad has been trying to get me to do this Top 5 for probably 3 to 4 months, not exaggerating, and I'm finally doing it. And the reason it took so long is because trying to nail down the Top 5 Robert De Niro movies is a ridiculous task. Trying to rank Robert De Niro movies is like trying to rank what time of day you want to have sex. It's just impossible. So, finally did it. I'm going to do it right now. And I have one honorable mention. And I'm not going to go through a gigantic list of honorable mentions because there is so many. I could do a top 20 Robert De Niro movies. But I'm going to mention one movie. It's not necessarily like it would be my number six if I did a top six. It's just a movie that I really like by Robert De Niro that I never hear anybody talk about. So I'm just going to mention it to throw it out there in hopes that maybe some of you will actually give it a chance if you haven't seen it. And that is The Score. Now this is a movie with Robert De Niro and Edward Norton. And I think it was the last performance by uh, Marlon Brando. Don't quote me, quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was. Basically, this is a crime heist thriller. You have Robert De Niro, who is like this veteran and stealing shit, and you have Edward Norton comes up. He's like an up-and-comer, little schemer, and he has this heist that he has been planning for months where he pretends to be this mentally, um, mentally retarded janitor in this place that holds in all these antiques, and he wants Robert De Niro to come in and team with him to steal this ancient scepter that's worth a shitload of money. It's a very unique movie, very good movie. It's a little bit slow in spots, but it's really creative when it comes to the actual heist part of the movie. Him and Edward Norton's back and forth is great. There's a great little twist at the end. Uh, just a really, really good movie that I've always enjoyed that I never hear anybody give that much praise to. So check out the score. Now, my number five, starting off, top five Robert De Niro movies. Number five is... Sleepers. Now this is a movie that, again, I don't hear too many people talk about, but I have always loved this movie. It's a very difficult movie to watch because of the subject matter, and it's a very um, gripping movie, so it's not a movie that you're going to pop in on the weekends just because you feel like you're in the mood to watch Sleepers, but I love this movie, I love the story, I love the acting, and I love Robert De Niro's character. He's kind of a side character in this one, but he's a big side character. And the basic idea of Sleepers is you've got these four young boys and I think it's in the, it's either in the 60s or something like that, or the 70s, don't, you know, don't, again, don't quote me on that, when they're kids, but they are basically in this tragic situation where they're trying to steal these hot dogs from this hot dog vendor, and in the midst of trying to do all this without giving too many details, and it's going to sound like, how the hell did that happen, they end up killing somebody by accident. So this prank leads to somebody's death, all these kids get sent to this children's penitentiary, penitentiary and one of the lead guards there is Kevin Bacon and these guards are physically sexually uh, verbally abusive to all the boys who were there so they go through that and as adults these four kids decide to get back at these guards and Robert De Niro is the priest who is like the father figure to the kids and he remains a father figure to them while they're in adulthood he's the one that kind of helps them along He's the one that um, he has a really, really big moral quandary towards about the two thirds to the three quarters of the way through the movie. That is a really dramatic moment for his character, being that he's a priest. Um, and just his character arc and his dedication to just how much he loves these boys is just a great character for Robert De Niro. He plays it perfectly. Like you could see kids growing up with this version of Robert De Niro as like a father figure and just loving this guy like a father so it just I love the movie it's very hard to watch like I say because of the subject matter um, but it's a really really good movie great acting some really dramatic and shocking stuff that goes on in that movie and Robert De Niro is great so that's my number five is sleepers number four actually yes number four is heat Michael Mann's heat now this is a lot of people's number one um, but it's just, like I said, it's hard to rank these movies, but I absolutely love Heat. This was the first time you got to see Al Pacino and Robert De Niro on screen together. They really only have one scene together, but it's a great scene. Basically, Al Pacino is this big badass cop who hunts down bank robbers and, you know, crooks. And Robert De Niro, again, like I was talking about in the score, is like this veteran thief. And it's got Val Kilmer in a side role, and it's basically Robert De Niro trying to survive as this you know big badass crook 
while Al Pacino is hunting him, and it's this battle of wills with these two professionals, you know, a bank robber and the cop. And he's not really, he's a bad guy because of the bad shit that he does, but he's not like an evil guy. So it's like this moral question throughout the entire movie. It's like, well, damn, do I want him to get away? Do I want Al Pacino to catch him? And it's one of those things where you just don't know who you want to win. You almost want both of them to win, but that's not possible. So it's just a great battle of wills between two of the greatest actors that have ever done the screen. It's one of his best roles. You know, he's got this whole thing about never commit to anything that you can't walk away from in five seconds flat. If you see the heat around the corner, that's where the, um, the title heat comes from. One of the best action shootouts that's ever been put on screen. Uh, just classic lines from Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, you know, because she's got a great ass. Great movie. So if you have not seen Hype, Height. If you've not seen Heat, definitely check out Heat. It's an absolute classic. It's one of the best crime thrillers out there. I think it is Michael Mann's best movie. It's one of Robert De Niro's best, and that is why it's my number four. Number three is one of the movies that Robert De Niro collaborated with Martin Scorsese, and it won't be the last one on this list. That's Cape Fear. Now, this is a remake to a classic movie that starred Gregory Peck, and it has Robert De Niro and Nick Nolte in the Gregory Peck role. And basically, Nick Nolte is this defense lawyer. Robert De Niro is a psychopath. He gets put on trial for, I believe it was rape, and he loses. So whenever he finally gets out of prison, he vows revenge on Nick Nolte for not representing him correctly. So it's basically him hunting him down, toying with him, mentally screwing with him, messing with his family, hurting people around him, taunting him. And not only is it one of the best villainous turns for Robert De Niro, but it's a great little battle of wills, just like Heat with Nick Nolte and Robert De Niro. It's terrifying in spots. Like, Robert De Niro is sick as he has ever been in this movie. He does some really vile things, some really just hard to watch things. Uh, there's a really great classic cinema style to this movie. Like Martin Scorsese directed it like it's a movie from the 30s or the 40s, and it has a really cool effect in the movie. There's great set pieces in this, like the finale on the boat. Just a phenomenal movie, terrifying movie, one of Martin Scorsese's best, one of Robert De Niro's best. If you like Robert De Niro in the villain roles, I have a hard time picturing one that's better than his turn in Cape Fear. So check out Cape Fear if you have not seen it. That is my number three. Number two, we're getting on up here to the end. All right, this is another movie that not a whole lot of people talk about, but it is one of my favorite movies of all time, and obviously one of my Robert, favorite Robert De Niro movies of all time, being that it's number two, Midnight Run. This is Robert De Niro's funniest movie. Uh, I only want to put one of his comedies on here. You know, Meet the Parents is great, Analyze This is great. Midnight Run is his best comedic turn ever by far he's basically a bounty hunter you have charles groden who's the dad from beethoven who is this big hot shot stockbroker who are um i'm sorry not stockbroker he is a uh, accountant for the mob and he steals all this mob money and gives it away to charity and now he's on the run robert de niro has to go and get him and bring him back for, um, across the country back to la by a certain date to get paid enough to get out of the life of bounty hunting and you got Joe Pantoliano as his uh, bail bondsman. You've got, uh, God, I forgot his name, John something. I totally forget his name. Put it down in the comment section unless I think of it. One of the cops from Beverly Hills Cop 3, the one who plays Taggart, he's in this in a great role of um, Marvin, who's basically like his rival bounty hunter. He's a complete dumbass. Just one of the funniest movies ever. It's got, I mean, like I said, Robert De Niro, his comedic turn in this is the best that he's ever done. Charles Grodin and him pair so well together that I cannot believe they have not done a movie together since because the back and forth with those two of just the frustration, especially on Robert De Niro's side of just wanting to strangle the shit out of Charles Grodin if he wasn't worth $100,000 and just, oh my God, it's so funny. I cannot put it into words. I love this movie so much that every single time I watch it, and I watch it at least twice a year, it's funnier every time I watch it. I laugh throughout the whole movie. Even though I know everything that's coming, it still kills me. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. So it's got to be on this list. It's my number two best Robert De Niro movie. Check out Midnight Run. It's finally on Blu-ray, so you have no excuses. Check out Midnight Run. Now, we're at the top of the wire. My favorite, the number one, the best Robert De Niro movie in the world, in history, to me, 
Goodfellas. I love Goodfellas. It's probably in my top five movies of all time. It's Martin Scorsese's best movie to me, and it's damn sure Robert De Niro's best movie. I love his character in this, the way that he pairs with Ray Liotta and Joe Pesci, how he grows throughout the movie to be like their friend and then their enemy, or well, Ray Liotta's friend and then his enemy. Just so many great classic moments, so many things that. I mean, it's the best mob movie that's ever been made, and it's going to be the best movie that's ever been made in the mob movie sense, probably ever, because there's no movie that touches Goodfellas. The things that uh, Martin Scorsese did in that movie was so innovative with the way that he told the story, the way he did the camera work, like he's following Ray Liotta and his wife through the club and through every single crack and turn that he does all the way till he reaches his seat. Um, the music in this movie is phenomenal, and it's a true story. You know. I, what facts are exaggerated for the movie, I honestly don't know. It's based off of a novel called Wise Guys by the Ray Liotta's character, Harry Hill, or Henry Hill. And it's just a phenomenal movie. It's the best mob movie ever. So, I mean, if you if you love mob movies and you have not seen Goodfellas, I don't know why you haven't seen Goodfellas, but definitely pop that in. I know people are probably screaming Godfather Part Two. They're probably screaming Taxi Driver and all that kind of stuff. But, you know what, like I already said numerous times, it's a hard as fuck to do a top five, even a top 20 Robert De Niro movies, but if I'm just picking movies that I visit the most, Goodfellas is by far, like by a landslide, my number one. And it's another movie where, you know, the first time I watched it, it's hard to absorb the whole movie. But it's one of those movies, just like Scarface, where every single time I watch it, I pick up something new, I kind of gravitate towards something new, it's a different experience, and I love the movie that much more every single time I watch it. It's Joe Pesci's best role. Uh, it's Ray Liotta's best work, and I just love Robert De Niro's character in this. Just how how cool and how respected he is while he's kind of a scumbag and he's kind of feared and he's always fucking everybody over, like especially um, Maury, the guy with the wig. Like he just screws him from the beginning of the movie, and just I love everything about Goodfellas. I could do an entire video on Goodfellas. Maybe I'll do a review one day. Who knows? But Goodfellas is my number one, guys. So that's my pick for my number one best Robert De Niro movie. And that concludes my top five Robert De Niro movies. Finally, I got it done. So you're welcome, Dad. You're welcome, everybody who has been asking for this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So put your top five list of your Robert De Niro top five best movies in the comment section below. And I'm really curious to find out what everybody's favorite picks are. So put that down in the comment section below, guys. Please like and share this video. And hit that subscribe button if this is the first time watching me. And if you want to check out some more of my videos or some more top five rundowns, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.